I'm guessing you wouldn't want to save 20% on Amazon.com. You wouldn't want to be able to use bitcoins instead of dollars. And you wouldn't want decentralized commerce. If I'm right in these assumptions, well, you certainly wouldn't want to visit purse.io to beat the status quo. Alright, contrary to the inflammatory but accurate title of this video, I'm actually something of a francophile. Je parle un peu français. I used to speak the language pretty well and uh, I like it. I like the culture, I like a lot of the I like a lot of the ideas that come from France and the tendency to reveal or uh, to uh revile uh, French folks as cowardly. This is mostly not borne out by history, but it is likely that the French government will be a lot more uh, accommodating of Islamicism than it is of uh, the average French citizen. It's it, it, this is already the case. Yeah, according to the truth about guns dot com, uh, the French process for getting a concealed carry license or permit or whatever they call it there makes California concealed carry look like a cakewalk. Even the the the, uh, the, re the relatively mild gun laws that we have in New Hampshire, I think we only have one or two, um, do provide a deterrent effect to carrying concealed. Imagine what it would be like if you had to go through 20, 30 hours of paperwork just to be able to carry and, and maybe still be denied. If it weren't for those layers of bureaucracy, it's likely there would have been at least one person carrying a firearm in the general vicinity of this terrorist attack. But the laws are so strict, I doubt there was a civilian gun carrier within half a mile of that, that office who had a firearm and the legal right to conceal carry it. Now, the fact that it was three gunmen who attacked uh, rather than just one, makes this a little bit unusual. And since normally when you hear about these kinds of things, it's one gunman taking out uh, a certain number of people because they weren't allowed to defend themselves. In this case, it was three gunmen. It would have been very difficult for a lone concealed carrier to survive an attack like that, but at least it would have turned the massacre into a shootout. A shootout is almost always better than a massacre. These folks were actually defended, supposedly, by the government. There was a police car shot up, I guess. A uh, quote from the uh, French uh, prime minister or president, can't remember which, Francois Hollande, said, quote, This is a terrorist operation against an office that has been threatened several times, which is why it was protected, unquote. But, but really, I mean, that's what they call protection? Twelve dead? Uh newspaper people and bystanders and maybe police you know and how much did it cost taxpayers to supposedly protect this office over the years why couldn't they just protect it by allowing the people there to sink or swim defend themselves or not defend themselves using the weapons of their choice see how, see how well this would have gone over at Oslobojania in Sarajevo where every reporter was armed practically most of them survived the war sitting 50 yards from the front line for four years, typing on their keyboards, producing a newspaper every day, underneath a collapsed cloud scraper. I should clarify that not every reporter was armed, but they were all allowed to be armed. And the most frustrating thing about all this is that this isn't even an issue that that is coming up for debate, right? It's like every time there's a massacre, it's like every time it's like that episode of The Simpsons where where the you know Earth achieves world peace and disarmament, and five days later the aliens come and conquer Earth with slingshots. Silly humans, your superior hippie technology is no match for our inferior weapons. Why is it that that's not even discussed? I did an in, uh, like a keyword search for France gun control and France concealed carry under news.yahoo.com. Didn't even get any hits. The, the, the phrases didn't even come up uh, in this search of mainstream news outlets. You would think people would at least be asking themselves, hey, yeah, what is the gun control like in France? And, you know, actually, it isn't quite as bad as I thought it would be when I did a search for it, but like I said, it's even worse than California. 
There are all kinds of other things the media will discuss about this. They will, well, should more controls be impl in, in, you know, imposed on Muslims, or should, uh, should the government be spending more money to protect blah, 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 blah. But they will never look at the zero cost solution, the one that costs zero tax dollars, might even reduce tax expenditure. Just letting people defend themselves if they want to. No Islamicist living in France should have been forced to underwrite the defense of that newspaper, and no reader of that newspaper should have been forced to fund the disarmament of the people who worked there. There's a reason things like this don't happen in Montana. They don't happen in New Hampshire. They don't happen in Switzerland. Except in these three cases, on very rare occasions, actually, I don't think there's ever been a massacre in New Hampshire or, or Montana. There has there was one in Switzerland, I believe. But when when the day comes that there is one in in, uh, in New Hampshire or Montana, hopefully very far from now, the small amount of gun control that we have in these two states will probably play a role in helping the massacre. The only appropriate thing for the government to do in most cases, in most situations, no matter what you're talking about, is nothing. A government that does nothing. That's the solution. Otherwise, it's arm wrestling against it itself. This government funding funds gun control. That government funding uh, then uh, comes in and protects, supposedly, the people that are disarmed. Just by doing nothing, they... Well, they each each problem would cancel the other out. They wouldn't have to be responsible for safeguarding these people. Now you know, there's one thing that maybe in the next few days we will learn more about the status of the people who are in and near the office. It's conceivable, for all I know, that some of them were allowed gun permits. They were allowed to carry and defend themselves. But again. Media's not even talking about it. I couldn't find any information one way or another as to what their defense status was. The civilians in that precise location. But my God, you would think, I mean, after all the hard lessons that they have learned in France, you know, um, how the country was almost conquered in World War I, how it was conquered in World War II, you know, the, the unspeakable sacrifices, the incredible courage that uh, French soldiers uh, displayed in World War One. How necessary would it th would that have been if there had been complete gun freedom at that time? In World War Two, this is even more the case. If people had just been allowed to defend themselves, encouraged to defend themselves, how much smaller the sacrifices would have had to be. Defense is a sacred right, a sacred thing monopolized by craven bully governments the world over who won't attack much of anything strong but have no hesitation about neutering the hapless citizen. This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Purse.io to beat the status quo.